Hey everyone, welcome to the Brown Carpet Podcast, the podcast where we take two weird news stories and turn them into shitty movie pictures. Then what happens, Josh? Well, then you jump on Facebook or Twitter and there'll be a poll there pinned to the top of the page and you can vote for the one that you feel should be brown lit. You can find us on Facebook at The Brown Carpet Pod or on Twitter at Brown Carpet Pod. And then uh, once we tally the votes on both Facebook and Twitter, we, we get our lovely friend Burn to make a um, poster for the Movie winner. poster for the winner and uh, it's going to be a thing of beauty, I imagine. I can't wait. With Bernard's talents yeah. on board. I can't wait to see my movies get made. It's unlikely to happen, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's unlikely. Cool. All right, let's get into the show. Yeah. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. <laughs> Jumped over three linebackers in midair. Sprouted animals like a gazelle. <laughs> no one laughs at a master of quack fool. Real nice. Many have died from starvation due to the difficulty of finding enough food such as seals. Shut up. No more Mr. Nice Duck. That's it. Right, Mr. Zitz? What do you make of that? You know, it's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. The Round Carpet Podcast. All right, so let's customarily do the... I'm nervous now because you psyched me out out there. <laughs> for <laughs> You said you knew what I was going to do. So, oh, right, so yeah, you, yeah. you planted the seed. I know what you do. Yeah, no, I do know what you do. Uh, paper, rock, scissors. Shall paper, rock, scissors, see who goes first? Yeah. Hang yeah. on one second, let me just look in your eyes. <laughs> Don't close your eyes. It's weird that we do paper, rock, scissors on a radio show because it's not a visual it's thing. It's not a visual thing at okay, all. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. You are so predictable. Oh, oh my shit. God, you're terrible. Okay, so you got, Josh is going first. That's four weeks in a row yeah. for those keeping score at home. Okay, <clears throat> my news story this week comes uh, from Austria, Ooh. where uh, the headline reads, Mystery after giant phallic sculpture is placed on mountain with unlikely new owners set to inherit it. Oh, wow. Now, that's, that's, it's quite a photo. Yeah, but what, awesome. what we're looking at in that photo, and we'll post it up on the uh, Instagram and stuff, a large wooden sculpture that looks pretty <laughs> much like an erect penis. It does. On top of a mountain in Austria. It does. Here's the story. <clears throat> the hunt is on for the artist behind an enormous phallic sculpture which has mysteriously appeared on top of a mountain in Austria. Mm. Hikers discovered the huge wooden erection last week at the summit of Mount Utschia. I might not be pronouncing that correctly. Definitely not. A 1,893-metre-high alpine peak. Jesus. Yeah. How the fuck How did you get, get it up, up there? there? That's it, man. Blogger Marika Roth <laughs> then brought it to the attention of the masses when she published photographs of the naughty piece. Authorities are now keen to establish the identity of the artist behind the sculpture so they can decide what to do with it. However, if their investigations come to nothing, it will likely be handed over to the owners of the land, thought to be a religious order of monks. Ah. So I reckon they'll be stoked with that. So maybe the monks own it? No? Well, they will if no one else claims it. Oh, okay. So it'll, yeah, be inherited by the monks. So that's the gist of the story. What's well, a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> Where are you going to go with this? So uh, my film is called Shortcomings, <laughs> which uh, will make sense later on. Yep. So this is a science fiction mystery set in the snowy mountains of Colorado. Oh, nice. The film opens with a young hiking couple, played by Dave Franco and Emma Stone, heading towards a rocky mountain peak. The girl stops, exhausted, and she asks if there's much further to go. Are they a couple? <clears throat> they are a couple. Yeah, cool. Just hang in there, mate. You'll find out <laughs> as things come to light. He tells her they're close and encourages her to keep going. She lets out a groan, puts down her backpack, and heads into the bushes to take a pee. While she's away, he checks his pocket, takes out a small box, and inside is an engagement ring. Ooh. He takes a deep breath. Today is the day. Romantic. It's late in the afternoon as they reach the summit. The perfect sunset is the backdrop as he sinks to one knee and reveals the ring, asking for her hand in marriage. Her jaw drops, her eyes wide, and the smile he expected is not there, just a stunned look of shock. Then he realises her eyes are not looking at him. She's captivated by something <laughs> behind him. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, he turns, and there it is. A 15-foot tall, intricately detailed, erect penis, meticulously carved from wood, the afternoon sun sitting perfectly at its veiny <laughs> oaken base. You had to do the vein thing. <laughs> well, there's detail. <laughs> News of the giant phallus travels fast. The mystery of how it got there consumes and fascinates the local and international <laughs> media. Tourists flock to feast their eyes on the massive dong in person and snap an epic dick selfie for Instagram. <laughs> it becomes a meme and earns the nickname The Big Don after Donald Trump, who is now only the second biggest penis on the planet. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's been a week since the appearance of the unusual installation, and there's a crowd of adventurers on the normally isolated mountain peak. In the crowd is young journalist Maggie, played by Jennifer Lawrence. She has Ooh, been nice. sent by her editor to attempt to solve the mystery of Big Don. How did it get here, and what does it mean? We follow her as she interviews locals, mountain rangers, and tourists for their opinions and theories. Eventually, she's given a hot tip. 
Deep in the nearby forest, there is a reclusive artist and marijuana activist, Bernard, <laughs> played by Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> and that's a shout out to Bernard, our amazing uh, artist who puts together the movie posters. He's an enigmatic hermit living in a log cabin and is the chief suspect for those in the area. When she finally tracks down Bernard, he initially wants nothing to do with her, but she refuses to be stopped. A combination of charming persistence and outright weed bribery finally cracks his frosty exterior. <laughs> As the trust between them grows, so does a spark of romance. Until... Nugs for hugs. Nugs for hugs, baby. <laughs> He's done it before. <laughs> One night, while sharing an enormous joint, sitting in a treehouse, staring out at the twinkling blanket of stars and full moon, Bernard opens up with his Big Don conspiracy theory, and it's full-blown crazy. <laughs> he believes the oak boner behemoth was placed there by aliens from the distant planet Shlongo as a tribute to the well-hung gods of planet Earth. You see, the beings who live on Shlongo are almost identical in every way to humankind, except for a few small details. Whilst they're vastly intellectually superior, the males of the race have incredibly small micropenises, <laughs> and they view human males as primitive freaks. And this mysterious wooden erection is both a tribute and a warning to us. He oh. believed the Schlongolians <laughs> are about to invade the Earth and harvest the penises of every male on the planet. The wooden cock is a warning placed here by the few rebels in the Shlongolian resistance that no male human with a working member is safe. I fucked that up Please again. tell me there's a leader called Wangus Khan. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Damn it. You're really good. Okay, that's that, I'm adding that. <laughs> and for that reason, Byrne has decided to neuter himself before the invasion. <laughs> Maggie exhales and puts down the joint. She is done with this fried lunatic. This is beyond bonkers. Bernard looks at her through the dissipating haze of marijuana smoke, his eyes pleading with her to believe him. She shakes her head, gets up, and climbs down the rope bladder. Cold. Yeah, it's, it could be all over. This I is know. the sad part of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Strings kick in. As she's walking away from the treehouse, the night sky fills with light. A spectacular wiener-shaped craft, pijazzled with thousands <laughs> of glowing lights, <laughs> pijazzled, <laughs> t- yeah. touches down the in the soft snow. The word not used enough. Ever. Not enough. Yeah, but, sorry. <clears throat> You're a regular pijazzler and not enough, uh, not enough air time. Okay, the balls rotate and slide open. A walkway extends. Three humanoid figures descend. At first, they are silhouettes against the bright light, but are soon revealed to be humanoid, male, and naked. Maggie's eyes are drawn immediately to their alien junk. Bernard was correct. These Schlongolians have the tiniest little dicks she's ever seen. The middle figure, played by Nicholas Cage. Yes! <laughs> we had to get Nick in. Four apps to get Nick Cage in. No, I'm surprised it took that long, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> he takes two steps forward and extends his hand. Maggie hesitates. Is this a greeting? Before she can reciprocate, the earth starts rumbling and the mountain floor between them opens. Inside a vast underground cavern, there waits an army of black robots, lined up in endless rows. Instead of hands, they have large blades resembling hedge cutters Jesus. at the end of each arm. Their eyes blink awake, glowing red, and a low humming noise begins. The blades twitch and snap shut as part of the startup process. The sharp metallic swing echoing in the quiet mountain air. <laughs> the final shot of the film is a close-up on the face of the middle alien. He smiles, the grin of a lunatic, revealing perfect bone-white teeth, and in a high-pitched manic voice, he bellows, My soldiers, bring me all the dicks! Wow. Let me cut to black. I love it. So I'm thinking it could be the start of like a trilogy or something. Yeah. You know, like, you know if it gains a bit of interest. And... That's like an arrival type budget. That's yeah. a big budget. Big budget. Yeah. Big budget. Well, like it's kind of like an indie sort of r- romantic thing up until the end. And yeah. then we go hogwash. Like out. just fucking Independence Day. Um, give me give me the tagline for this. <laughs> the tagline for the poster is <laughs> an adventure two and a half inches in the making. <laughs> it's a reference to the Schlongolian novel. That's great. Uh, and the soundtrack would be done by John Williams. So it's a classic epic theme. Rip Rip Woodchip. Wood Dick. No, not that John Williams. Oh. The dude that did like the Star oh, that's Wars. That's actually John Williamson. So, oh, is it? Yeah, that, that was horrible. I got that wrong. <laughs> Sorry. That would be interesting. <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the soundtrack would be a classic epic theme befitting of the start of this trilogy that we see an intergalactic civil war waged on a planet as a result of alien penis envy. I like it. Great. Thanks, man. <laughs> Cheers. And we should mention... So that's called Shortcomings. <laughs> Coming of short... Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. You got it? Yeah. Cool. Sure, sure. <laughs> All right, it's what also, do you got? No, no, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to stop. You don't want to stop. What do you got? Have we? we, we, have, we we've got. To, can we go over the cast again, real quick? Okay, so our cast. We've got. We've got a, a little bit of a cameo at the very top um, with Dave Franco and Emma Stone. Yep. they're the hikers at the start who discover the the knob. Yep. Then Jennifer Lawrence is Maggie. She's yep. our lead. Yep. She's the journalist. Yep. And Zach Galifianakis plays Bernard, the uh, marijuana <laughs> activist <laughs> in the great. middle of the, the woods. And Nick Cage is the alien. And Nick Cage is the alien with king. the tiny dick. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. And you could be a stunt double. You could come in for you know for the cock shots and stuff. So, I can. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm equipped for it. Yep. <laughs>
So I, I think too, um, we probably should mention now that, and it's it's a trend that we talk about dicks a lot on this show. <laughs> but it is it an ongoing theme? <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to my story. Oh, Jesus. No, I, I, my, mine is uh, not dick related at all. Really? No. Get the fuck out. But uh, my headline is, should I jump in? Uh, does it have anything to do with animals, drugs? These are the other themes that have been a bit repetitive. Yeah, no Both. animals. No animals, drugs, alcohol. Got a daddy though. <laughs> Got a daddy, a dead body. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my headline reads... Undertaker loses hearse and corpse after going for a boozy lunch. <laughs> An unfortunate Undertaker managed to lose his entire hearse and a dead body after stopping for a boozy lunch on his way to a funeral. That's a pretty boozy lunch. It's very boozy. The driver had been sent to Italy to pick up the corpse and to take it back to Poland, but stopped off for a bite to eat along the way. After parking his Mercedes hearse somewhere near the main train station How in Munich, this guy? Who the, <laughs> no, the hapless funeral worker was then unable to find his vehicle, which still had the deceased locked up in the back. Oh. Local police officers told the media he wasn't very helpful, and we think that alcohol may have come into play. <laughs> After 24 hours in the public call for, and a public call for help, the car was eventually spotted near the city's Isa River which is nowhere near the train station. The 24-year-old <laughs> later continued his journey to Warsaw to deliver the body. So right. it wasn't all bad. So he didn't lose his job. No. <laughs> That's all right. Shit happens. Which brings me to my... So I've got a couple of titles for this film, and I want you to pick it again because I, I trust your opinion. Down. Okay. So the first one, it was the obvious one, was Dude, Where's My Corpse? That's not bad. <laughs> you do uh, a lot of plays on, I do. on uh, existing titles. I do. I do like to twist existing I'll, titles. I like that. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, four Frothies in a Funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, six feet under the influence. Oh, nice. What do you like? Oh, uh, I mean, dude, where's my corpse? It just rolls off the tongue. It does, yeah. Let's, it's, let's it's go with bad. that. Yeah. Okay, so the story begins. Brody, an apprentice undertaker, awakens Brody. with a massive hangover in a large field with no memory of the previous night. Can I just jump in? Is this the second film that you pitched for the dude waking up with a massive hangover? Yeah, there's a boo I've got booze. Booze is another thing. Booze is a definite thing for yeah, you. Yeah, okay. yeah. Continue. Brody, an apprentice undertaker, awakens with a massive hangover in a large field with no memory of the previous night. Yep. There is a large drawing of a penis on his left arm, underlined by the words, Asher Ayres. Penis theme. We've already, <laughs> we've already hit all the buttons, dude. I, I forgot that I wrote that. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, okay. All right, we both have dicks in our stories. <laughs> oh, Good work. We should change the name of this podcast. Yeah, it's the Penis Movie Podcast. <laughs> yes. His breath smells of booze and the voicemail on his phone has a message from an angry widow demanding to know the whereabouts of her dead husband. Mm. This prompts Brody to ask the titular question, where the hell is my corpse? <laughs> in a panic, in a panic, Brody desperately begins retracing his steps in an attempt to discover where he left the hearse. Is he on his own at this point? Yeah. Okay. In the distance, Brody notices a barn and makes a beeline in its direction. Mm -hmm. Upon arrival, he meets a redneck named Cooter, banjo on lap and slowly rocking on his rocking chair. Cooter explains he saw him last night stumbling around his field yelling the name Harlan over and over again. Like a lightning bolt, Brody remembers a bartender and a bar named Harlan. Hmm. Brody quickly thanks, thanks Cooter, but before he can leave, Cooter produces a sawn-off shotgun and suggests he accompany him to the barn. Okay. Who's, who's playing Cooter? Cooter's being played by Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing the red He's just about crazy enough. And uh, Brody is Sean William Scott, Stifler. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Against his will and fearing for his safety, having only recently watched Deliverance, Brody enters Cooter's dark barn. <laughs> Once inside, the barn, not Brody, Squeal like a pig boy. <laughs> it is revealed that it, it is no ordinary barn. It is a treasure trove of makeshift rusty torture equipment and posters of Tom Cruise. <laughs> Cooter, pro Cooter proceeds to chain up Brody before donning a Halloween mask of Tom Cruise's face. This went so dark. <laughs> Brody wets himself. And knowing it's, it's Gary Busey makes it even more creepy. Let's <laughs> Those teeth. Um... Life flashing before his eyes, we are shown a blurry memory montage, a, fle a freshly cooked chicken palmy, a wise-cracking bartender, and a blonde woman looking lovely in his eyes. Brody snaps himself out of it, just as Cooter starts taking off his belt. Oh, no. Quick-thinking Brody uses the re his remaining unchained leg to donkey kick Cooter in the head. Then, using the dexterity How's of... How does a donkey kick work? Like a back... Like a back kicking backwards with oh, a heel. Oh, okay, yeah, right, yep. Yeah. A snap back, okay. Because I presume he's got him bent over. I thought it was like a donkey punch, but it's a very different thing. Different thing, yes. <laughs> Continue. Then, using the dexterity of a ninja chimp, Brody manages to unlock himself with his free foot with the key between his toes, all, the while, all while Kuda is unconscious on the ground. Brody furiously legs it towards the village up the road in hopes of finding Harlan and his bar. As if through a giant stroke of luck or the author's laziness to wrap this up, 
Brody stumbles across <laughs> Harlan's aptly named bar, Harlanquins. Ah, oh, like that. There. Yeah. It is there he is greeted by a very jovial Harlan, who immediately starts making fun of how messed up Brody was yesterday. I need to. I need to picture Harlan. Who, who have we got playing Harlan? Harlan is played by Paul Rudd. Fantastic. You like that? Yeah, I like that. He explains to Brody that he came in around lunchtime and started drinking heavily. He also says he was getting pretty friendly with a local woman named Anna, and they were drawing on each other, amongst other things. Okay. It is then Brady remembers the dick drawing on his forearm and realises the accompanying words Asher Ayres is an anagram for hearse Isa and that he, that he parked his hearse next to the Isa River. Right. And just to make shit confusing this for is himself, a, this he is a mixed the words up. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, this, and this is a massive jump to shark moment so, <laughs> right. to wrap this up. Yep. Um, Bring it home. The film ends with Brody driving off into the distance, narrow, narrowly making the funeral on time and being sworn off Tom Cruise movies for the rest of his days. Fair enough. So yeah, cu- the cu- <laughs> what's Tom Cruise movies got to do with it? Well, the, the dude in the Tom Cruise mask earlier in the barn. Busey, oh, of Don, course. Yeah. Busey put on the yeah, yeah. Tom come on, stay with me. Come on. Uh, well, it was all very <laughs> creepy there. I'm trying to block things out of my immediate memory. So, so the cast is uh, Brody is Sean William Scott Stifler, mm-hmm. Cooter's Gary Busey, Harlan's Paul Rudd, and Anna is Anna Faris. Oh, Anna Faris. Yeah, nice. yeah. I think this could be Busey's opportunity in the Academy Award. <laughs> you think so? I think this could be supporting actor. <laughs> yeah? This is his moment to shine. Like, it's a perfect role for him. It is. Yeah, yeah. like, he was born to play this role. Um, the tag, I've got two taglines. Yep. The first one is, the film that brings a new meaning to having a stiff drink. <laughs> 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 or, sometimes even undertakers can't make deadlines. Oh. I think the first one. The stiff drink? The first one's strong. Okay. So the soundtrack is Cannibal Corpse doing Tom Petty covers, <laughs> with the hero track being Free Fallen, a little nod to Tom Cruise and Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a basically a slapstick comedy, think Deliverance meets Memento meets Weekend at Bernie's. I was thinking Memento with the thing on his arm. Yeah, and that. Yep. yeah. Um, and $30 million to do it right. $30 million bucks. Yeah. Where are you spending all that? I don't know. It's not really that, doesn't need that money, does it? No, it doesn't at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. There's no special effects. Okay, so I said it would cost thirteen million bucks. <laughs> it seems outrageous. Thirteen dollars. No, um, I think maybe two million. You get that done for two million. Two million. No yeah. worries. It's a bar. There's a barn. There's a bar. Mm. And a, yeah, that's it. It's pretty much it. Yeah. It's just character study. Yeah. I like it. And ga- you're going to get Gary Busey cheap. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you get him real cheap. He'll probably pay to be involved. To be honest. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There we go. There we go. We did it again. Yeah, I like it. At four. So, so what, was your, what was your final title? Dude, Where's My Corpse? Dude, Where's My Corpse? So, uh, Shortcomings? Shortcomings was mine. Versus uh, Dude, Where's My Corpse? Yeah, go ahead and jump on Facebook or Twitter. There'll be a poll up as we speak, and you can vote on your favourite. And uh, the right. winner will get brownlit, and we'll get a movie poster made out of it. Yeah, please do vote, and please subscribe to us on iTunes, and, and leave a uh, rating and review. That'd be great. Five stars would be nice. And also, if you have any suggestions of weird stories that you would like us to do, Send please them in. email yeah, email us at uh, thebrowncarpetpod at gmail.com. Yep, every week it's a struggle, so if you can send some stuff in, it makes us lazy pricks. That's true. <laughs> it makes our life easy. All right, All right guys, that's uh, another episode done of the Brown Carpet Podcast. Uh, tune in next week for more of the same <laughs> nonsense. We'll see you then. See you, guns. See you later. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. He jumped over three linebackers in midair. Sprouted animals like a gazelle. No one laughs at a master of quack fool. Real nice. Many have died from starvation due to the difficulty of finding enough food such as seals. Shut up. No more Mr. Nice Duck. That's it. Right, Mr. Zitz? What do you make of that? You know, it's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. The Round Carpet Podcast.